Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. I'm Catherine. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to step back in time to a time where in place where money was no object, particularly if you were a wealthy industrialist and wanted a little place to spend the summer. I mean, money's no object to us, Catherine. What are you talking about? (laughs) That's true. It wasn't just the past. I'm kidding. So we're talking about the Gilded Age of the late 1800s and early 1900s. And the place would be, of course, Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And it was, at that time, the center of the summer social season. Newport is home to a seriously impressive group of houses, which were built by people with names like Vanderbilt and Astor, who wanted these cottages where they could spend the summer social season. Now, they call them cottages, but these were not little tiny houses with thatch roofs. Now, these were some very impressive, large mansions. Yeah, I mean, cottage, come on. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Now, many of these are now open to the public, and they're definitely worth seeing, especially if you like cottages. (laughs) cottages. <laughs> the most famous is called the Breakers and it was owned by Cornelius Vanderbilt II and he of course was chairman of the New York Central Railroad system mm-hmm. and this cottage is a 65,000 square foot 70 room Italian Renaissance palazzo with uh-huh. 50 foot high ceilings and it was inspired by 16th century palaces that you might see in Genoa or Turin. So if you consider that a cottage, mm-hmm. I'd like to see what your idea of a mansion is. Yeah, and this one costed $12 million to build back then, which is about $335 million today. So I mean, that's some serious money. Serious money. And what I thought was really interesting is that some of these descendants of the Vanderbilt still actually spend their summers in the breakers on some of the top floors outside of the viewing public of all the tourists. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice, yeah. Now, another famous mansion is the Marble House, which was built by Cornelius's brother, William Vanderbilt. And this one uses several kinds of marble inside and out, and it has a ballroom that features three kinds of gold. And Mrs. Vanderbilt divorced at at one point and married someone else. But at any rate, she later built this uh, Chinese tea house at the back on the seaside cliffs and there she used to host rallies for women's rights. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good for her. Mm -hmm. The latest mansion to be open to the public was, or it did belong to tobacco heiress Doris Duke. And this was the 1887 oceanfront estate called Rough Point. Uh And it was open to the public back in 2000. Now this is a very ornate mansion and it features Ming dynasty vases and paintings by Van Dyke and Gainsborough. And the gardens were actually designed by Frederick Olmsted, who we know designed Central Park. If your garden designer also designed Central Park, then... It looks pretty good, I'm sure. Yeah, you know you've (laughs) made it, too. Most of the houses are pretty close together on Bellevue Avenue, but you'll probably only be able to handle seeing one or two in a day because you really want to give yourself some time to soak them in and really imagine what life was like back in those days. And some of the houses have audio tours that feature the voices of the former residents and the servants of the time. So it kind of gives you a real uh, glimpse of what life would have been like in the Gilded Age. By the 1930s, because of the Depression, a high inheritance and property taxes, and of course not to mention a shortage of servants. Darn. Yeah. Um, A lot of the Newport estates were getting hard to maintain and hard to afford. Yeah. (laughs) And so a third of them became schools, nursing homes, even apartments, and then some, sadly, were even bulldozed to build shopping centers. How depressing is that? I know. And so it wasn't until about 1962 when the Preservation Society of Newport County raised the funds to buy a mansion called the Elms and they opened it to the public. And then after that, they bought some others to preserve them. So that's when the preservation effort really got going. Which is good because it is sort of like we said earlier, taking a glimpse into the past. For sure. So a lot of these homes really aren't the only ones to take a look at if you're visiting Newport. Um, There's an area called The Point, and it's a 10-block section that's also home to one of the largest concentrations of colonial homes in the country. Now, these are not going to be like these huge mansions. Mm -hmm. These are tiny colonial homes that have been in Newport since the 16th and 17th century. Wow. And one cool thing is a lot of them have historical markers on the building, so you can see which were homes to some of Newport's 
first merchants, trademen, and even pirates. Wow. So that's a really <laughs> cool area to see a lot of history. Yeah, they had some pirates living there. That's amazing. Yeah. One of the other interesting buildings is America's oldest synagogue, which is called Turo Synagogue. And that was completed in 1763. George Washington was one of the visitors back then. Today, they still get a lot of visitors, and it still functions as a synagogue today. Yeah, so of course, there's a lot of history in Newport, and that wraps up our quick little tour. We hope you've enjoyed it. And we're going to post a lot more on our blog. And of course, you can always follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and send us an email. All those addresses will be at the end of the podcast. And we'll see you next time on The Coolest Stuff on the Planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.